Take a look around you. Go on. Take a good hard look. Tell me, what is it that you see? What I'm curious to know is if your eyes see the same as mine. Trees? I grant you, there are a fair few trees here, but where your eyes see trees, mine see wood. That be the difference between us. Wood, how times have changed. In my day, it was precious stuff. With the timber for the buildings and the ships and the faggots for the fires. Carefully managed woodlands such as these could wield their owners a tidy fortune, which is why people like me were so important. By the by, Jacob is my name. I'm a woodsman by trade, and I used to work in these woods, pole cutting and such like. They were difficult, my times, what with the plague and the great fire. That war with the Dutch, that was a bit too close for comfort. They came sailing up the Medway into Kent, burnt our boats by the dockyards in Chatham. Aye, difficult times, but a time when fortunes could be made. Take the war with the Dutch. Guns, as you can imagine, were in great demand, and that was good news for our local ironmasters. That's all very well, I can hear you saying, but what have guns got to do with wood? Well, let me tell you, without wood, there'd be no charcoal. And without the intense heat that charcoal produces, the vital ingredient for the guns, the iron, would stay trapped in stones, such as this. No good to man nor beast. At time of war, the demand for charcoal was so high, they'd even send the trunks to the collier, the charcoal maker, sometimes even the horn beam. And that would annoy the baker no end. He always said the horn beam bakes the sweetest bread. Well, there was a war on. Oh yes, the war kept us busy in these woods all right. Making charcoal is quite a process. And to maintain a steady supply, these woods had to be managed with great care. Get it wrong and you'd soon run out of wood. And the fear of that led to many an argument, I can tell you. So many people depended on wood, you see. I needed a fair few tools for my job. The felling axe for cutting, the dull axe for splitting, and the handbill for cleaning up the trunks. There's also the side axe for pointing up the poles. Uh, and I'd take a rope with me for pulling down fallen trees and a saw for cutting the poles to length. The wood was half a day's walk from my home. So what I'd do is I'd spend four days working there, sleeping the nights in a ditch, and then I'd go home, have a couple of days rest before returning. I was a tidy worker and quick too, which was important as I was paid by the amount of poles I cut. I'd know where to stop as the owner would mark the last tree with a blaze. He was careful to ensure a steady supply of wood by only coppicing sections at a time. Can you see that each tree stump has lots of trunks growing out of it? Well, it's like that because it's been cut or coppiced every 15 years or so. I've left a tidy sloping stem, important that, so as the rain runs off and stops the stump from rotting. Also. If another tree lands on it, the bark won't get damaged. You can't have the bark being damaged because that's where the new poles come from. Once it's down, I clean up the sides. Nothing was wasted. Everyone wanted a bit from these trees. The long, thin bits were used for pea and bean sticks. The bevins for lighting the copper on wash day and the faggots for the fires. <coughs> Oh, <laughs>
course, it's a lot quicker now with all this modern machinery, but the notion's still the same. Now, I've told you about why managing a woodland by coppicing was so important in my day. Indeed, in those turbulent times, it was vital to the well-being of the country. It kept its very heart pumping, as it were. Before I leave you, I ask you to think, why is managing these woods in the same way important today? Why is coppicing so important? It's not as if we've got enemy ships sailing into Kent anymore and the iron industry is long gone. Coppicing regenerates woodland so that there's a constant supply of wood to harvest. And it's great for the wildlife too. Woodland flowers, small mammals, insects and the birds that feed on them all thrive under the coppicing cycle. Coppicing is still important today as local products such as fencing, hurdles and firewood are produced by local craftsmen and it's a great way of managing our woodland which we are lucky to have a lot of in the high weald. I see you're admiring my culvert been here for as long as I can remember. Busier it was in my day though. What with the carts stacked with iron ore or timber from my labours. Either that or piled high with broadcloth on its way to the fields to dry. Like you, I used to wonder who built it all those years ago and for what purpose. It's the finest one I've ever seen and that's the truth. If you ever find the answer to that mystery, you be sure and let me know. <laughs>